Hallelujah. Father, we worship and give you thanks. We thank you that you guide our footsteps. We thank you that you promise that we'll never be alone anymore. Now may your word circumcise our hearts, that our ears might receive, that our lives may bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Give Jesus a clap offering before you sit down. Everybody sit down. Thank you. It's a new day. I say it's a new day. This month is a new month for you and your family. Whatever you lay your hand to do shall prosper. Don't start the day with weaklings. Start the day with strengthened people. Don't, 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 don't start the day with somebody who say, since last night I not sleep, my neck is just, just go this corner. No. Look for somebody who say, thank God today is a brand new day. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? That is the language you need to start the day with. If I will just... Well, if you are the strong one, rebuke that infirmity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now cast out that demon of oppression and affliction and pray the prayer of faith. Do you hear what I'm saying now? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers in high places. What we are here for this morning is to learn by the grace of God how to communicate with the Holy Spirit. Demonic spirit communicate fast to people's mind. That's why sometimes you think positive, many times you think negative. And 90% of your life is governed by your thinking because it's your thought that gives you direction. But if you are not led by the flesh and you are led by the spirit, your thoughts are the thoughts of God. Romans chapter 8. Very, very wonderful lesson we learned from here this morning. Verse 4, Romans 8 verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. For if ye live after the flesh, ye die. But if ye through the Spirit do modify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the Spirit of bondage again to fear, for ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are, we are, we are, I am, you are. All right. Now let's jump quickly to the down, 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 lower side of the Bible. Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, for hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we, then do we with patience wait for it. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 26. Seven. He that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse twenty-eight. 
and we know that all things, we know that some things, we know that few things, we know that occasionally some things work together for good. Everything work together for good. Everything work together for good. Your farm, your business, your marriage, your home work together for good. For them that do what? All right, look at the verse we changed this morning. We left here, Pastor Festus and I left here after eight. We left, we finally finished after eight. The scripture that we centered on was, look at the next verse. For whom he did for no. Hmm? Is that in your Bible? He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, 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 moreover. Is that in your Bible? Whom he predestinated them, he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, then he also glorified. Them he also glorified. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God is for me, who can be against me? All right. Now look at where we are coming from. We are told here that the fleshly people groan at. But even those of us that are spirit filled also groan at. Is there. The pain that the unrighteous suffer many times, we suffer it because of infirmity and the affliction of the enemy. But we are told here that the affliction that is put on us by the enemy is not from the throne of God. Affliction is something the enemy throws on you to afflict you, to cause you distraction in your area of pursuit. Then infirmity is that thing that you find in yourself, you don't know where it comes from. It's suddenly, like you wake up one morning, your eye cannot open, that's infirmity. You wake up one morning, your stomach is twisting, about to kill you, that's infirmity. It's also affliction, but it's infirmity, because one whereabout you didn't apply for, you don't know where it's coming from. But we are told, if we are in the spirit, as God himself is in the spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And that spirit is alive today. I say that spirit is alive today. That spirit is alive today. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can quicken your mortal body. It is of great paramount importance that you live above flesh above the natural dependence and dependability on your skill and flesh. You have to come to this stage in your life, you now pray all you know to pray, but after you have prayed all you know to pray, and knowing what to pray is not enough to do you good, there's a spirit kept in store. It is called the spirit of the living God. When that spirit come upon your life, what you don't know how to pray, that spirit prays it for you with great acceptability from God because the spirit of God touches the heart of God. The mind of God touch. the spirit of God is in the mind of God. And when that spirit descends on you and come on you and possess you and occupy you, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Then, the prayer you didn't know to pray, when you open your mouth, the Spirit sees your fleshly tongue and gives you divine utterance. And that divine utterance soak away and take from you the fleshly fears and defeat. Through that ability, there's creation in your head. That's why when you see Spirit-filled people, they are people of many parts. 
because there's creativity in their head, there's creativity in their heart, there's knowing and understanding within their being. They are the same people that do not stay long time in the camp of affliction and infirmity. Because immediately that spirit come upon them as a torture. The spirit of God is the upper spirit and the higher spirit and the bigger spirit and a leading spirit and a healing spirit and a deliverance spirit. Come and sweep away that spirit. That is why every one of us must ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, if the Holy Spirit come to you and take your tongue, you, do, you don't pray anymore like this. Father, this thing has been paining me for five years now. I hope one day it's going to be healed. <laughs> no! The Spirit of God is the Spirit of anger against anguish. You look at your body, that's why the Bible says everyone should examine himself. He's not asking you to find out whether you drank two years ago. No, that's not what he meant by that. Examine yourself. When you want to take communion, see where you have pain. When you take communion, say, the blood of Jesus is going straight now. as in divine injection to that part where I have my pain. Losomaha, kuroteke, premaha, mosondo, yekelama, yepose. I'm healed. You say that, you get up, you look at your flesh. It has bowed to the understanding of the Spirit of God. You don't spend 10 years looking for people to come and visit you. Because one of the greatest problems ordained ministers of all kinds, of every ministry have, is that I've been in that church now for 27 years. The only time I have problems, they didn't come to visit me. They have the spirit of complaint, not the spirit of compliance. And the spirit of complaint will touch anybody at any time. Everybody in the church is, is your enemy who is well because you are sick. It looks as if the saints gave you the disease which came from the enemy. But unless you know that your God is not afflicted for the healer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we want to this morning, by the grace of God, spend the first 10 minutes to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? That's what we spend time. We spent nearly 40 minutes this morning. We spent nearly 40 minutes here. I made sure that everyone that came here this morning was compelled to at least believe there's need for the Holy Spirit. Because as he says, when we know not what to pray, the Spirit itself helps our infirmity. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying now? Not only that the Spirit helps your infirmity, but listen to this. The Spirit also prays for you. A direct prayer that gets to the ear of God. Because God is not an house man, it's not an evil man, it's not a jackery man. There's only one language in heaven, and that is the language of the Holy Spirit. And once that Holy Spirit come, in you, come on you, then you cannot ask yourself question, which was what I spent time to teach this morning. He said, now, now that I know God is for me, who can be against me? Then he said, what can we say to all these things? Wahala of food, need of bed rest, rent money, I don't have. What can I say to this thing now that I know God is for me? Try it like that. What can I say to all these things? Now that I know God is for me. Try it louder. That's what we did this morning. Okay, now, if you know that God is for you and you are not able to pay your rent, the Bible says God is the one that supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory by who? Christ Jesus. All right, you understand that one. Now, Jesus, when he rose up, he said, Touch me while I'm still here. For spirit have no bones and flesh. Touch me, I have. But when I descend, when I descended, I still retain that. But when I now ascend, I shall go back to where I come from. When I get there, whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, because I've tested, I've known how flesh is like now. When you have broken hands, Jesus has had wounded body. He has had bruised eyes. He has had mad face. They slapped him that you couldn't recognize him anymore. That's what Isaiah 53 said. They so beat him that if you look at him, you wouldn't believe it was Jesus. But thank God, in resurrection, the whole thing we are left in the grave. The curtain of 
of the dead body did not rise up with him. When he came up, he came glorified. He died in weakness, he rose in strength. Somebody tap your right leg now. Hallelujah. We are done with it. So, you need to know. He said, what do we say? You look at everything around you. They are gloomy and barbarous. The Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Amorites, they are all amoring you and clamoring on you. Now, the Bible is asking you, what do you say now that you know God is for you? I pray that my language will come to your head. Now that you know God is for you, what do you now say to these things? That is the actual interpretation in Greek and Hebrew. Now that you know God is for you and sickness is not God's own, what do you now say to these things? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Now that you know that hunger is not the gift of God and you know God is for you, Kamazi, Kehe, Sekeze, Kokopo, Kapapapo, Sokote, Leboha, Bayakatasa. Now that you know God is for you, fear is not from God. Sickness is not from God. Abandonment is not from God. Is anybody there? Start to unwind your engine. Start to unwind your engine. Start to unwind your engine. Start to prepare it. Start to get it ready. Start to get it ready. Because the reason many of you will never be rich is that you have working so hard in the flesh. And laboring with nothing in the spirit. And the arm of flesh will fail you. It fails. No matter how you try. No matter how you try. You say, I don't know what happened to my money. Now this is not the question you have to ask. You have to ask yourself, what do I now say to all these things? Now that I know God is for me. My own is to say, I told them this morning, I said, as a, as a daily congested busy person. Particularly, I don't know the day God will deliver me from a project. It is my prayer that between 9 and 10 years, I'll be delivered from projects of the heavy magnitude we're involving. You are not, unless you're in the spirit, they can carry you from the church to faith medical center. So what I said to myself is, I will build my church. God, I'm lucky to be a co-laborer with you. It's not my project, it's your project. Then what do I do? I jump from the flesh of afflicting myself. Because if I'm not willing to do what God said, God can look for any other person to do it. That's what I remind myself. Of. Number two, God didn't call me to destroy me. He called me to bless me. Therefore, if I'm going to go by blessing, I cannot misinterpret grace for groaning. We are told to let this mind be in us, which was in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ will never tell you to go and sleep the gutter. The mind of Christ will never tell you to cry to your enemy's camp for help. The mind of Christ tells you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The mind of Christ tells you, it's rough today, it's going to be neat tomorrow. The mind of Christ tells you, I may be beaten down and worn out now, but I'm a winner no matter what stage I find myself. When the heat is over, I'm going to sing a new song. When the battle is over, I'm going to be more than conqueror. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Okay, if you can be patient with me for a few minutes, listen to what I glanced through this morning inside my memory when I got home between 9 o'clock and 10. It says in Romans chapter 4, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith, which means even faith has righteousness, and righteousness has faith. Do you hear what I'm saying? So many, 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 many. I began to tell myself early this morning, before 5 o'clock, many of the prophetic utterances God has given me, not one has ever failed. When the Lord spoke to me about the falling of the Berlin Wall, I brought it here from England home seven years ago. When the Lord spoke to me about the crumbling 
of the Gulf War, I brought the tape home. Anything God tells me, I make sure that I communicate it to people because a day will come, you will not be here again in the physical. But what you said, people can remember you said so. The good that happened in your time should not be forgotten. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? The communication line between you still in the flesh and God in the spirit can only be achieved by the spirit of God that can come upon you. Did you hear what I'm saying? Sometimes you find yourself in a scale of losses. Down in business, down in home, down in marriage, down in health. And so many times, it is from one downcast to another downcast. From one failure, the, the affliction of the enemy is only multiplied. Only the grace of God brings subtraction to the works of the enemy. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now the promise of what God gave to Abraham to be the heir of the world was not to him alone, but it was to all who will come through faith to righteousness. That means any good thing God did for Abraham is possible for you today. 